Welcome to Comics Bazaar, the channel of comics commentary and arcana. This video features the Punisher War Journal number 8, cover dated September 1989. And this is a really iconic Punisher War Journal cover. It looks excellent. Love the colouring on this piece, featuring the Punisher standing with the New York skyline in the background. Got the Twin Towers there, we've got the Empire State Building there, Uptown. Love the use of colour here, the deep purple background and the orange and yellow lighting on the skyscrapers there. And part of the reason for the success of this particular cover is the legendary inker that Jim Lee has teamed up with only two years into his career at this point, professional comics career, and that is Klaus Janssen. So Klaus Janssen there using some screen tones as well on the skyscrapers and just a brilliant inking on Lee's um, pencils of Frank Castle there. I love the uh, rim lighting as well. My guess is that um, perhaps Jansen himself colored this uh, cover. It looks like his colors. So the rim lighting there was cool. Double lighting on uh, the Punisher's face. Just a really excellent image. Let's open this one up to the credits page. And I've commented before how I do like the credits page, how they've done that um, on the inside cover in the Punisher War Journal. So the story is Karl Potts, Jim Lee art. That means that he is penciling and inking his own work. And the Karl Potts training wheels are off as well. So there's no Karl Potts layouts for this. This is all Jim Lee, all his own layouts in this particular issue. Jim Novak letters, Gregory Wright colors. So let's get into it. And what I really like about this first page here is Jim is clearly going for an homage to Watchmen. We've got the Watchmen nine panel layout and we've also got Watchmen style storytelling with the focus here on the, on the front page of the Daily Bugle, the headline for an article about local residents beginning to fight back in gang drug wars. And then the camera pulls back and we see this guy Sam come out of his uh, newsstand shop close the door over, it's a gloved hand, we're thinking it's the Punisher, we've got the Punisher's first person narration there from his war journal, my war is many fronts, drug dealers sent my families to their graves, now I send criminals to a much deeper, uh, to a place much deeper, i.e. hell, <laughs> it's good stuff. And then just the uh, moment to moment, action to action storytelling going on here, we've got Sam, Sam coming out, he recognizes um, this neighborhood woman Edna, he gets greeted by a taxi driver as well, he takes, he's rattling, or he's uh, uh, um, entertaining the child here who was crying with uh, a rattle. And then something is happening behind him. The woman sees it. We've got this shadow on his back. He's tapped on the shoulder. And if we thought it was the Punisher, it turns out not to be. Hi, Sammy, I hear you're fed up. And then the Punisher's uh, war journal narration here. In the past, the drug dealing, drug dealing gangs of Upper Manhattan killed only each other in turf wars. Over 500 bodies went to the morgue last year. And now we turn the page and what are we going to get? Except a double page half spread here. And that is a fantastic image. And the title of the story, Damage. So on the cover, we had the promise of an introduction to Damage. And you know, what turns out to be the case is this guy here is Damage. Like there's a TM on that as well, but Damage will turn out to be just your basic uh, drug dealer, uh, leader, gang leader. So a bit of a, I don't know, what would I say? Like a little bit of false advertising there um, on the cover. If you're expecting a major villain, it's kind of a run of the mill type, but just fantastic work here by Jim Lee. Remember, he's penciling and inking himself on this page. So we've got interesting techniques here. We've got a brush for the pattern in Sam's trousers here. We've got ink spatter on the page. We've got a use of screen tone for the muzzle flare here as um, damage is firing off rounds from his um, Uzi um, automatic weapon. And in the dialogue, we learn that his companion here is called Ronnie. And he, note, is not firing at Sam or the baby there. He gets shot. And the woman as well, she shot into the storefront window. So it's a brutal opening to the issue. And we've got blood there on the ground. It's 1989. It's colored in red. Yeah, so excellent, excellent work. So the cab driver there, he sees what's ha what, what happened. 
and he goes after the two gang members to run them down. We've got the uh, poignant image of Sam's hand there and the child's rattle uh, cracked on the ground. And then they start firing at the guy in the cab. So Ronnie, who didn't fire at Sam or the woman, is instructed by his leader there to not to shoot the car, but to shoot the driver. And so he does. So he is a murderer. And that's relevant for what happens later in this issue. And actually in issue number 11 as well, where... Um, we pick up with this with this particular character in the future. That's a great shot there of the um, the taxi cab being shot to pieces, the tire, the windows, the driver, and then it crashes into a lamppost and blows up. So the lads run off, and then we get back to the Punisher's uh, first person narration, and he's driving his uh, van around. Tonight's path uptown takes me past the building my city safe house is in. Haven't been there in over a week since discovering someone other than Daredevil knows about it. Whoever it was that left a note for me hasn't been back. The bugs I planted would have picked them up if they had. So that was Wolverine. Um, and that's a reference to what happened at the end of the previous issue. There's a review of that issue on the channel here, which you can look up. So the Punisher is either paranoid and or just very careful about his personal security. So he's not going back to that safe house. And then he... Um, thinks here some more practically the jersey warehouses micro and i use seem too far away sometimes for quick stabs at new york city crime hope those folks running the buildings delhi are getting enough business so this is an ongoing subplot uh with this asian family that run the delhi um in the punisher war journal issues it's interesting we don't get any narrative captions here explaining for new readers such as me because I can't remember exactly who they are from uh, the first few issues, uh, their deal, all of their names. So we have a bit of business with them. This turns out to be the uncle of the girl here. She's delighted to see him, but he's been shot. And there'll be a little bit more from them a little later in the issue. And then we're back to the Punisher in his van. And he is uh, getting ready to, um, to target the gang responsible for the shooting of Sam and uh, the woman and her child. So he sets his van to uh, automatic security systems and he says now, it's, now that they're kicked in, it's time for him to kick, do some kicking of his own. This is a great panel here with his shadow cast on the alley wall. And here we've got Ronnie counting up his takings from an upscale client up from Manhattan buying his drugs there. He's got $367 from his day's work. And uh, the Punisher is right there behind him. That is a fantastic panel. I love the way the, cat, the shadow is cast uh, over the side of Punisher's face by the color there. The light coming from behind. And Gregory Wright's colorings here. Uh, the, the purple background the blue of the Punisher's face and um, and chest logo as well. And Ronnie pulls a gun on him and there's a use of a screen tone here on the gun too. So Punisher deals with this guy very easily, smashes his head into a bin, <laughs> and then he starts breaking his arm because he's uh, squeezing him for information on the location of the gang and the gang's leader in particular. So Ronnie uh, squeals, he says he'll talk, he says the Lazaro warehouse up this avenue at the corner of 185th and Punisher asks him like what's the leader look like, this is funny and he responds Hispanic early 20s and Punisher replies you just described half the locals so he must squeeze him harder there and he says he's the only one wearing Bunsen burner colours allowed to have a moustache so that's the name of the gang the Bunsen burners and um, it's some kind of gang protocol. He's the only one allowed to have a moustache. So that's going to identify him to the Punisher. So the Punisher says, thanks. I'm going to leave you now in no condition to continue pushing poison or to warm my target. So he's going to, um, he's going to kill him. And then there's a voice from out on the street. And it turns out to be Lucky Ferrani, his grandmother. And this is a great top-down shot from Jim Lee. So we've got the alleyway. We've got the fire escapes delineated there. We've got the shadow, the colouring from Greg Wright, the blues. Um, and the grandmother here, the top-down shot of her with her groceries. And so she doesn't see the Punisher at all. 
and she tells her grandson to come along now i got to get uh, medicine uh, to his sister his sister's sick um, i don't suppose you made any money to help out for a change you know social security only goes so far so the punisher has a quick think about this is he going to waste this guy or what that's a great panel as well as he's looking at the woman and he's thinking and he said he whispers to ronnie he says say one word that gets back to damage and i'll return in a bad mood <laughs> god and so the kid has got it his grandmother starts hitting him with a cane for being um a layabout and then she tells him to get back home this instant the punisher's watching from the shadows of the alleyway that's great i love the way that lee does his trench coat and of course the skull symbol on his chest as well it's really well done remember again this is lee doing everything pencils and inks and he's doing a great job then we're back to that subplot with the asian family and their deli and they're attacked um, and we'll see a little later what's going on there but i'll skip past it this is a nice top down shot of this uh the bedroom of ronnie's sister she's sick there he gets a phone call as his grandmother goes to church he gets a phone call and it's from damage he wants him to uh join up with the gang and ronnie explains he's sorry his kid sister's sick and damage is having none of it he says don't sound like you're dedica dedicated to us ron i guess we'll have to cut you loose by which he means kill him so now ronnie rats out the punisher he says wait listen i just spotted something you'll want to know about i saw that punisher guy park his van down the street from me he took off on foot i don't know where so keep your eyes open so damage takes that um, piece of information and lets ronnie live for another day and then he's got this kind of uh, second in command his lieutenant here egghead is his name and um, he suggests that they uh, basically uh, break in like steal basically steal the punisher's van because it's rumored to have a ton of weapons in it so they high five there and um, off they go meanwhile 50 or rather 15 minutes later the punisher's up on top of that warehouse building and he has a plan in terms of taking out the gang and the leader and he's listening into them and all his listening devices picking up his rap music it's 1989 yes so ronnie's looking out his apartment window down at the arrival of the gang and the punisher's van there so they get out that's a great panel as well where they're getting out of the back of uh, damages van and they're already getting to work on the punisher's van over here and then the punisher has its automated security systems and what happens is that they kick in with first of all a sonic pain generator so that takes care of them initially and it's also got a security camera here which pops up from the roof and it's un unable to identify the gang members so it's withholding lethal defenses so that's interesting like punisher is being reasonable there he's not going to have the van uh, use lethal measures against just anyone who tries to steal it so then we're back with him on top of the warehouse building up on the rooftop and he's got a um a thermo imager that he's uh, directing through the the painted glass but he's unable to see with it how many bodies are inside there's one or two he d the battery's low on his device so he's gonna have to act without full information on what's going on in the building then we switch back to the street scene with damage here um and suggesting that they uh, throw a concussion grenade under the van which explodes there and then they try to open the back of the van and that doesn't work then we're back with the punisher on the roof and the punisher is um, fed up with the high-tech equipment he puts on this gas mask throws down these uh, gas canisters into the warehouse building swings off the roof through the window then we're back with ronnie on the street watching his fellow gang members uh still thwarted in terms of their attempt to get into the punisher's van and one of the gang members here is uh expressing doubts to the leader about the van's security defenses there might be more tricks waiting so this is the measure of damage as a gang leader 
he just basically shoots the guy dead for questioning his orders but that's obviously an indication too that he's getting rattled by their lack of success so the Punisher swings in through that window that's a nice anchor image there by Jim Lee and starts blasting away uh, with his um, Uzis double handed uh, uh, no sorry there he is over there with his own Uzi everybody's got Uzis it's 1989 and he's blasting away and tumbling in behind this upturned table so the gang members just start blasting away at that table how's he going to have cover behind a wooden tabletop and they think he's swiss cheese they head over he's not there he's not behind the table he's blown a hole through the wall and crawled through and here he pops out the side of the door that's just a great page that's really good comic storytelling from jim lee and the lads are taken by complete surprise. Great colouring too by Greg Wright as well. Love his palette of colours. So Punisher blasts away at those two. We leaves one of them alive. And I love how he says in his war journal here. Left the last one breathing for conversation's sake. <laughs> I just love his dry sense of humour. Um, so he starts questioning the guy. And then there's these guys that are waiting for him as well. So they start blasting away. He uses the injured guy as cover so he gets absolutely wasted there by his comrades that's a nice image here of the punisher ducking and using that guy as a human shield also like the detail on the grips on the uh, underside of the of the guy's boots there as well that's nice uh lee would always do that into the future with the the treads and grips on the underside of shoes and boots um, let's see, try to get this page open here. Yeah, so we're switching back and forth between the street scene and uh, the Punisher in the warehouse. So the lads here attacking the van again with a sledgehammer. Uh, the legs are blown off them by the automated defenses in the wheels even. And Ronnie up here is watching. That's a nice panel as well. Uh, he's watching and he thinks his gang's getting murdered out there. So Damage is getting more angry and angry. He turns on Egghead for the, for the very suggestion that they uh, uh, steal the van because that, well, you can see here that effing van's trash my gang. Back to the warehouse. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of this cutting back and forth on the same page between the warehouse scene and the scene on the street. Um, I wonder would it be better if... Uh, each scene had its own page to itself but I do get the point that there's an implication that what's happening in the warehouse is happening at the same time as this on the street so this is a nice anchor image here of the Punisher uh, kicking this guy in the jaw breaks his jaw in fact so he can't interrogate him and this huge guy from behind grabs him and Punisher here in his narration says he's as strong as a gorilla i should know and i like that because that's a reference to uh issue number six the jungle adventure where he was tackled by a gorilla so he really does know so then he pulls a nice move here popping the guy's eardrums elbows him in the chest and then kicks him to the ground and when he gets up again and races at him hurls at him uh, and he even refers to him like a Hulk, that, that he's like, uh, that he is the Hulk, the Hulk keeps coming, only thing left is my shooting knife. So this is, this is cool. So the knife, the blade shoots out of the hilt right into the guy's, is it his face or his chest? Anyway, it's pretty violent and it does the trick, puts the guy down. So I do like these three panels here. What I like in particular is the top down angle, this first panel. And the lad's looking up at the power lines and Egghead has an idea to uh, short out the electronic defenses of the van. And it works out. So that's nice storytelling here by Jim Lee. And changing the angles around as well keeps it, in, keeps it interesting. So let's continue. We see. Trying to... Turn the page there, the newsprint. Um, back in the warehouse, everybody's dead. Punisher says, no one left to talk to. <laughs> They're all dead. Um, it's good, good stuff. Back on the street, uh, Egghead's got an idea to 
uh, ensure they don't get electrocuted getting into the back of the van. So the van opens up, its electronic defenses were taken out. So damage gets in the back of the van, but there's a mechanical security system. And Egghead here is thinking, didn't figure on a mechanical floor trigger, thought this whole thing was electronic capture coils, must be based on that new memory metal I read about in the Times. So damage here is getting chewed up by the mechanical arms and coils. And, uh, you know, there's no honor among thieves. Egghead decides to run away. I think it's best I take my leave now, he says. And then we've got a little um, cutaway to the, uh, the Asian family there up against this guy in a robot suit. Uh, your one has got some martial arts skills. Kicks him out of the, uh, the side of the, the building onto the ground. That seems to take him out. That's a nice top-down shot there by Lee. And it turns out that it's her father's face in the suit. So whatever that's about. It's a nice inset panel though by Lee. And then the Punisher's walking away from the warehouse. Everybody's dead in there. So his first person narration, high body count, low effectiveness. I wanted the leader. Maybe Microchip can help dig up a lead. So he gets back to his van. His van has also had <laughs> quite the time of it. All these uh, gang members dead on the ground. And inside in the back of the van is damage, of course. And Punisher says, Santa came early this year. Um, and the guy's ripped himself to shreds, struggling. Not much meat left on his limbs. Lots of compound fractures. So what's he going to do? Is he going to mercy kill him or what? So the Punisher's here thinking up in the driver's seat, death would be a relief. He'll never heal up properly. It will be worse for a violent bully like him to be alive and at the mercy of inmates who like to pick on the weak. It will be a living nightmare for this one. <laughs> so he's got a real, um, a real hell for him. He's going to drop him off at the hospital. So he goes straight to prison for a horrible um, incarceration. So he calls Microchip. And he says, the van's a mess, got a lot of work for you. Be there in about half an hour. Have to dump some damaged goods at the hospital first. So a nice pun on the guy's name at the end. Damage, now he's damaged goods. So that is a really dry, witty end to the issue. This is a kind of like macabre humor from Karl Potts, but it really suits the character of the Punisher, of course. So great work by Jim Lee, pencils and inks, remember. Um, he's doing very well here. Only just over two years into his professional comics career. That's some excellent work. So at the end of the comic, there is um, one of those Punisher Armory entries by Elliot Orr Brown. There's a letters page here where they're promising that the title is going to go monthly from issue number 11. I like that on the back page. There you go. I do hope that you enjoyed this review and commentary on the Punisher War Journal number eight. If you did, please like the video in YouTube. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content like this.